dedicate two minutes, two hours per minister or two or three hours to talk about the ministerial plans that we've just received because I voted for two hours for the two plans considering that normally it's one hour for each plan. The, the amendment as it is is amending the original um, motion which is the ministers together for an hour and a half with the officials there for two hours in one meeting to change it to the estimates only. So won't the amendments not to do to our to go back to our normal process, which is one minister for an hour and the officials for the full two hours, and then a second meeting of a standalone minister for an hour. This is just amending what's in front of us, which is an hour and a half with the minister side by side. We would require to perhaps defeat all of this and then try to rebook a minister and a minister in separate meetings to go back to what we traditionally have done here in the past. For clarification purposes, I would like to see the amendment as moved by Mr. Genius, the one we have before us now. I would like to have it in writing so that everything is clear. Clear for me and for my entire team. Thank you. Yeah, I don't suppose you have uh, the, well, I don't think Mr. Genos has the amended one in writing. How about we just have the clerk read back the uh, the, amend, the amended motion as Mr. Genos proposes? Because it's just taking, it's, ba it's basically just taking out main estimates and departmental plans with the intent, I'm going to assume, to do the main estimates at a separate time like we have done in the past. That makes sense. We're going to have the clerk read Il faudrait it. Redéposer une nouvelle motion. Il faut... A new motion will have to be tabled once again to have the main uh, estimates and another one for the plans and another for the... A motion to have the minister show up for the main estimates or for the departmental plans. It's We have just booked them because the ministers have always agreed because it's part of their, every minister's role is to attend their committee and defend their estimates and justify why they're asking for X amount of dollars. So we will, I, I'm going to assume we're not going to need a separate motion to have them come to do the main estimates as they should be doing. But this is, and we've never in the past had a separate motion to actually have them show up to do the supplementary estimates either. It's just we book them, as is their role to defend. I can have the clerk just read back where we're at right now, though, for you. It's, it's, it's a very short one, actually. Can go ahead, sir. And then I've got Mr. Genuis and Mr. May. To date, we have uh, amended the original motion by Mr. Souza with the amendment proposed by Madame Bignola. It was subsequently amended as well, <clears throat> pardon me, by the amendment put forward by Mr. Genuis. And now we are on a second amendment by Mr. Genuis. And this is the text that I have based on the second amendment that's currently being debated right now by the committee that the committee invites the President of the Treasury Board, the Minister of Public Service and Procurement Canada, and the President, Canada Border Services Agency, Aaron O'Gorman, to each appear separately for one and a half each hours, I presume is the missing word there, as well as officials regarding the 2023-2024 Supplementary Estimates C. And again, the current amendment would remove the main estimates, 2024-2025, and their respective department plans, and that the meeting take place on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. That is the amendment proposed by Mr. Genuis currently being debated by the committee. Uh, Mr. Genuis, go ahead, and then Mr. May, then Mr. Baines. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, just um, sort of fairly, fairly briefly, um, the, uh, 
I, I, Mr. Sousa said, well, we need a bit more time and discussion for, for this. I mean, Mr. Sousa is the one that moved his motion in the middle of witness testimony. So uh, I'm working with the text of a motion that that uh, that he put forward. Uh, that's that's why we're in this situation. Uh, the, the, the chair uh, has in the past, uh, quite rightly, I think, asked ministers to appear before the committee uh, on those different aspects of their responsibility. The, the intent of this motion seems to be uh, to be to do something irregular, that is to bundle together uh, ministers and um, and uh, also to bundle together accountability events. So to take, normally we hear from a minister on the SUPS, a minister on the mains, another minister on the SUPS, another minister on the mains. He wants to have all the ministers on the SUPS and the mains and the departmental plans happen all at once. And this is, this is a, a, an attempt by Mr. Souza and, and his government to limit accountability, uh, to limit the need uh, of ministers to respond to, to questions. Uh, and that's quite obvious. Uh, so given that he has, in the middle of witness testimony, put forward this motion aimed at limiting accountability, uh, we are seeking amendments to go uh, within the parameters of minister schedules as we understand them. Uh, let's go back to the normal thing. Uh, so... Um, to, to the question about what uh, the effect of this second amendment, and, and I think this is this is uh, the last amendment. I, I'd be happy, you know, we'd be happy to see this motion uh, pass with this amendment. Uh, is uh, to simply say that this would be the supplementary estimates, uh, not the um, and that and that the the main estimates uh, can be dealt with in the normal fashion. Um, so that's that's really all that needs to be said. Thanks, Mr. May, then Mr. Baines. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, my original hand went up to uh, to ask a question uh, that that uh, my block colleague uh, got a, a clear answer to because um, it was getting a bit uh, a bit confusing in terms of what uh, what we were amending and, and how we were amending it. Uh, but to to to, um, to my colleague uh, uh, Mr. Genuis's uh, comments, I, I find it amusing. Um, that we moved motion to to bring the ministers um, uh, to to be accountable for their ministries, and now he's accusing us of of of, uh, of somehow uh, protecting the ministers uh, from that accountability. Um, but I, I I and I and I would point out that um, and I and I'm a guest here. I, I uh, I'm, I'm covering for um, uh, my honourable colleague uh, Eric Kazmierczak. So I so I, I regret I don't have. Uh, uh, clear line of sight of the the norm of this committee, uh, but I can I can speak to uh, the traditions of other committees. And uh, as the former chair of uh, Human Resources, Skills, and Social Development, and the status of people with disabilities, uh, I did that. Uh, was was very honored to to take on that role for four years. Um, quite often we would have ministers appear together just out of out of pure necessity uh, we have a limited time uh, in the calendar to to have ministers appear before committee uh, before the estimates are are, are are through the process um, the question should be asked do we do we want to have the, the, the member the the ministers here to actually speak to to uh, these uh, these um, these measures? Uh, after the fact, uh, after they've been processed, well, of course not. We want to be able to speak to, to them uh, before uh, before the process is, is wrapped up. So I think, you know, I I I, I understand the comment uh, and where it's coming from 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 uh, from my colleague, uh, Mr. Genius. But uh, to be blunt, uh, I think you know we we have uh, uh, very limited time in order to to go through these these uh, these measures, uh, bring them together. Uh, is not always the easiest thing to do, and we all, we also don't know that it is possible to have them appear together. We'll have to wait to uh, to get response back from from the ministers and their schedulers. Um, but I think that the the motion from my colleague, um, Mr. Souza, is is more than reasonable, um, and I think we're getting very uh, we're getting far from the actual motion that was tabled. It's it's become something completely different. Um, so I think uh, to that uh, to that I will will vote no uh, on this uh, on this amendment. But uh, thank you for the time, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. May. We'll go to Mr. Baines. But I will point out that we have until May 31st before the uh, the main estimates are deemed reported. So we do have a fair amount of time still. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Baines. Then Mr. Sousa. Yeah, Mr. Chair. I'm 
I'm just uh, wondering if we can, if I could get the, the motion as it is now uh, in writing, please. Uh, I know uh, the clerk um, read it out, but it's just tough to follow if we can get that in writing and email to all of us. Yep, the clerk will send that out. Mr. Souza. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we are trying to provide uh, the minister's availability. Um, my understanding, while I had not been on this committee or on any of these committees prior to the year uh, that I arrived, it's my understanding that, you know, the invitations to the ministers are made by, by a motion. It's not unilaterally made, I, I don't, from my understanding by the chair. So we're trying to take that process in hand and we're trying to make the ministers available accordingly. And we're trying to extend the time of the joint en engagement of both ministers to expedite the matter and to facilitate the issues that are being looked upon. So um, I, 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 I won't be supporting the motion for Mr. Janowitz because we're trying to facilitate and get the very individuals before this committee uh, to do what is necessary on our behalf. And so um, I, I'm, I, I, I look forward to reading it once it comes forward. I look forward to seeing exactly what is being suggested or proposed. And I'm also trying to make certain that we have the ministers available for the purposes that we need in regards to this. And that's why we've extended the time to have them appear jointly. Um, and that's it, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Is there anyone else? I'm going to suspend for two minutes and agreed upon and written into it. What he has sent out includes Mr. Genoese's amendments. Mr. Sousa, your hand's still up. Are you speaking on this still or can we go to a vote? No, I need to uh, review this um, okay. chair. I'm just reviewing it. We're just reading it now. We just got it. So we're taking some time. So if we can just have a moment. And we'll take okay, it through. I will do 60 seconds maximum. It's not a lot of changes, so we should get to it, please. Mr. Backrack, uh, do you wish to speak on it while it's being reviewed? And we'll get back to Mr. Souza. Sure. My only comment, Mr. Chair, is just that some of the sentence structure reads a little bit funny, particularly with regard to the reference to officials, um, sort of added in at the end. And the words each appear twice, or the word each appears twice. To each appear separately for one hour and a half each. Um, but I don't want to, you know, outstay my welcome by wordsmithing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, ho I'm, I'm hopeful. It is, it, is, it is written as it had been adopted, but I think um, I understand what you're saying, and we'll we'll make sure we're clear on the intent of it. I'm just hoping that the intent comes across, and yes. I'm, I'm unclear reading it, how the order fit into this. Yeah, hold on, Mr. Yes, sure, Mr. Chair, point, point of order. order. Oh, sorry, I've been trying for a minute, and it, I have had a, a technical issue. Um, but, but, Chair, uh, the, the version that was distributed was not what I said in my amendment. Uh, I, I said uh, to uh, each appear separately. So I, I think I was quite clear on that. I said put the word each before appear and then separately after the word appear. So, and I think that will address Mr. Backrack's issue as well. That's so, what we um, received from your staff, Mr. Genoas. Sorry, what? That is what I, the I, clerk I said, received from your staff. I didn't, I didn't provide written notice of, of that. I said to each appear separately was what I, what I said on the record when I moved the amendment. That is what uh, your staff apparently provided to the clerk and the clerk made the adjustments. Can you perhaps just go back to your? Sure, I, I moved an amendment verbally, and I was clear about the what I said. So, uh, and that, and the, and the transcript will make that clear. And no, and no, no text was was. Yes, yeah, so so. the clerk did not just pull it out of the air, Mr. Genoas. If he tells me, unless he's mistaken, inform me that the text that was sent out came from your staff. I understand what you're saying. Or perhaps you need to confirm with your staff of what was sent over to okay. the clerk. Okay. And, and perhaps my staff made made an error, and I apologize if the staff sent something after the fact to the clerk uh, by email in error. Uh, but I, 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 um, I mean, I think I, I moved an amendment verbally, and that was and that should be reflected. Thank you. Okay. 
why don't we move to Mr. D'Souza? Why don't you draft something to ensure that the clerk has the right version and then we can resend it back out. Mr. Anthony, I see you're back. We're going to be a short while longer, I am assuming, so you're welcome to disengage again, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Souza, did you wish to, you know, why don't we wait a few minutes, we'll get the correct version and we will redistribute it, but 